All right, we've left some crap I'm not going to pronounce. And we have to sort of head off in a different direction. we got to go find the Lufa tree. Lufa tree, something like that. You know, I don't know if we did it in the last episode or not, because it's once again been a little while since I've made one. But let's go take a look at our new character. Now, she's another sort of typical white mage slash summoner, like Dagger is. In fact, if you look at their stats, they're actually quite similar. Uh, it goes at a higher level, actually, right now, so she should be a little bit more powerful. She has a little bit lower MP and um, lower HP. A little slower, though not quite as strong. Lower magic. Wow, you know what? I never really checked these stats before. Same attack, lower defense, lower evade. Lower magic defense and lower magic evasion. Is it because I don't have any... Uh, I have crap armor on her, maybe? Oh yeah, you know what? I could uh, I could increase her stats with better armor. But I sort of need to start giving her abilities, so I gotta... I gotta have to... Um, a loudmouth. I'm gonna want that. I gotta be careful on what I put on her. Jelly. That'll uh, prevent her from petrification. She already has all these abilities. Defense and magic evasion. You know what? That's a good idea. And she's getting her... Getting her summon from there. Also high tide. Let's uh, give her... Oh, you know what? I don't have any more abilities. Hmm. Auto regen! I don't have enough crystals to actually get anything more on there. But anyway, she is a sort of typical white mage in terms of stats and, and summoner in terms of all that kind of stuff. So, like, there's nothing really special we're going to be catching about that. What is this? Prince Confusion. Alright. Although, one thing I will note is kind of unusual. Zidane is the only character here that is a physical attacker. And Vivi being a black mage isn't a physical attacker, but he can do quite a bit of magic damage. Both Dagger and Eco are not. They are, in fact, they're not even attackers at all unless you're counting your summon magic. They're white mages, which is based around the idea that they're going to be doing cure magic and that kind of crap. So, we have really two people in your typical battle which are going to be doing any sort of damage to the enemy. And I have two white mages, which are mostly just supporting the party. So we're a little off balance here. I find it kind of unusual that they go into this game at a certain point here and just throw everything so far off balance. But, you know... Video games, yo! Yeah. Okay, let's see her in this fight here. Solution. That's. I think that uh, that rage is a character. Yep, Vivi's been raged. Rage increases your attack power. Unfortunately, it also removes your control of the character. So for a character like Vivi here, that has a low attack power to begin with, it's going. To, I mean, it'll make it a little bit better, but not. Uh, not anything uh, to write home about. And I can't use his black magic. Now Zidane just got raged, so... <laughs> I was going to just end up attacking with him anyway, but now I won't be able to attack the enemy that I'm planning on attacking. It's a bit of a pain. Oh, these guys counterattack. And they use magic. Nice damage. It's 
Zidane is literally doing 10 times as much damage. <laughs> It should go down with this hit. Well, no, not this hit, but the Zidane's hit. I wish Vivi wouldn't have even attacked there, so there wouldn't have been a counter-attack. Now, it's a little unusual also to be looking at this and thinking about how Zidane is the power of the group when he is essentially a... Uh, he's a thief class, which historically in this series has not been something of a um, not been a physical attacking class you know I mean a thief can attack physically but it's not their main job okay we gotta get to that tree I think this was the direction Can't see off in the distance. Oh, there we go. There it is. Lifa tree? I'm going to call it Lifa. Creepy music. <laughs> They're just screwing around. All for show, and the Eidolon got impatient, told her to hurry it up. <laughs> we'll note, though, that I like the differences between Dagger and Ico. Um, she was able to break the thing, and she was talking about how she forces her, like, her concentration onto the horn that's coming out of her head. And that's how she's able to communicate with the Eidolon. Oh, uh, well, Dagger couldn't do that, or at least she wasn't able to, uh, she, she doesn't think she can at least. Wow, look at that thing, what's that called? I imagine fire takes out the big wood monster. Nice damage there, buddy. Ah, shit, silence. Well, at least I got Loudmouth on. Oh, no, it's on VV. Yeah, he's guarding against it. Good, I already got that set up. Slap, miss. Gradual Petrify. Ah, no. Okay, I don't have the, uh, the any way of guarding against that right now, so... 
Oh, it's dead. We're good. Alright, since Eco got the um, high tide ability. Oh, okay, I'm not going to switch out yet. I could, uh... Carbuncle... Uh, uh, Phoenix... Oh, yeah, I guess there's a lot of stuff i got to put her through before I can finally, uh... get all the Eidolons for her that I can. 15 more AP, and then I can switch her little trinket item out to something else and start giving her another Eidolon. What's up with the uh, dagger? Is she... Oh, yeah, I definitely gotta switch this out. Um, no, you know what? She has all of these. Auto potion. I do not want that. Uh, I guess I'm really gonna be just picking this up based on stats. And I want magic for her. And it's the only thing that increases magic. She's already wearing it. Ah, evade and magic defense. Ah, magic evasion goes way down, but you know I'll choose this because normal evasion goes up. Whoops! And she'll learn a new ability. things. Back attack, you guys suck. Back attacks in this game are especially bad because it takes forever for your characters to... I mean, this, uh, this game has a tendency to take a while doing everything, anything, in terms of battles, because it's, like I was saying before, it's sort of designed around the idea of there being four characters, so your ATB gauge seems to charge slower than it has in the previous few games, and it, um, and all that kind of stuff. And then when you get, fun, and you get you know, caught into a back attack like that, your ATB gauge starts at nothing and doesn't start charging immediately, apparently. And then you gotta go through the effort of changing the, changing the characters that you want to have in a different position. Like, I want to get Dagger, Vivi, and Eco into the back row, but nah, I'm not going to have time for... I'm not going to have time for, uh... Vivi. Oh, look, I got them to the back. It's too late now. The fight's about to be over. Now, there's something up with this tree, because there's mist here, and as we noted when we first arrived on this continent, someplace that, uh, in the past few decades, no one has... Hey, look. Uh, save. As, as I mentioned before, I do have issues with the kind of timeline of this game. I mean that in the sense that the backstory seems oddly compressed to make any sense to me.
Oh, there's a dialogue box there. There he goes. Oh, jumped off. Now, if you look at certain aspects of the backstory of this game, such as the fact that the Mist Engine, which revolutionized and the travel in this world and all that kind of stuff, took place like one generation before, like the previous generation of Regent Sid. Hey, a tra chest. Great. So it wasn't like a... The, the Mist Engine allowed the building of airships and all that kind of stuff, which their entire cities built around the idea of airship travel and all that kind of stuff. So obviously airships are an enormously important part of travel and economy and all that kind of stuff in this world here. So, it seems kind of weird that enti like entire cities have been built up around these airships and kind of stuff. Like, Lindholm has an entire like tower of a city built with big holes in the side of airships to pull in. When airships haven't really existed for all that long period of time. Also, airship travel made travel so easy and the perception of the dangers of the mist became so great that people stopped traveling on foot and long distance travel between different cities and towns and all that kind of stuff was done seemingly exclusively through airship travel. So then that, like, then you start thinking, wait a sec, uh... If, all, like, say, ship travel, meaning ocean-going ship travel, stopped being a thing, only, I'm gonna, let, let's jump out and say 40 years ago. So that seems like a reasonable number. That, If that only happened 40 years ago, why is it that this continent over here, which we only don't know about because ship travel stopped being a thing, being outloaded by airships, why, how is it that people have forgotten that this exists out here? How is it that people don't know about the Liffa tree? and all that kind of stuff when all this stuff was not really all that far in the past. Why is it that everybody chose to live on the continent covered with this dangerous mist when there's another continent over here, somewhat arid apparently, but obviously survivable, which seems much less hazardous based on the fact that there isn't this terrible mist and monsters and stuff all over the place. Why haven't anybody moved out there, or why did they forget about that? It also seems kind of weird that travel by ship stopped being a thing. Ocean-going ship stopped being a thing. Because of airships when I assume that the ocean travel was fairly, fairly safe compared to traveling by foot on the ground. So, a lot of it doesn't really make any sense to me. Oh, what is that? Seems like something that'd be... Oh, you know what? It's a weapon. You know what? I, I'm not gonna... Even though this is better... I got Panacea there. I'm gonna want that. But I'll gain more abilities, float, zona, silence. 
Uh, I gotta go through one more fight to get Kyura. Oh, unless she has some other piece of armor that's giving her that. Or some other piece of armor that can give her that. I'm gonna go through one more battle before changing out her weapon. And here it is. Alright, let's change that out. I want Panacea, and it won't take long to get it, but I can pick that up later as long as I don't ditch the air racket. Bandit. I want to make sure I get Bandit. Don't throw this crap away. game kind of forces you to hold on to old weapons and armor to try and make sure you get all the abilities. Responded to Zidane. Odd. Do you not feel the momentum or anything? The laws of physics stop working on this thing? It's the one that doesn't speak English. But uh, she can understand it anyway. Oh, are they? <laughs> Just a regular battle. Against these things. Hmm, Vivi's running out of magic. It's always a problem when it comes to um, any kind of a mage character, especially a black mage, which will more uh, burn through their MP pool quicker than a white mage will who won't necessarily have to do something every round. You know, whatever. Attack the wrong one. Although I do like how Dagger has a... Um, her air racket attack is a sort of a ranged attack, so she doesn't lose power when attacking from a distance, unlike Iko and, um, and Vivi will. Although her low, her low strength doesn't exactly give her a powerful attack. She does benefit from having the back row.
Perhaps it's the large roots that are sticking out all over the mist continent that aren't over on this continent, except for here at the tree. Oh, I have control over it. Ha! <laughs> Ah, oh, great. Well, they gotta throw some battles in here somewhere, don't they? These dragon zombies aren't really that tough. Fire magic and just smacking the thing around a little bit. She's been infected with zombie, though, so I can't use any healing abilities on her. Ah, you know what? I could probably hurt the thing by casting Cure or Life on it. But that's not really necessary, is it? Do I have to cure uh, Eco now of that? Or does it disappear at the end of the match? Fight. Eight minutes. I'm going to have to end the episode, though. So, thanks for watching. The next one, we'll probably figure out what the hell is happening down here. See you later.